Welcome back everybody. Uh, we just got back from camping and our garden has exploded. As you can see, our zucchinis are just gigantic. Um, I have already made zucchini relish. I have made zucchini marmalade. I've actually done two rounds of zucchini relish. So I'm looking for new ways to store our zucchini. We've been wanting to try spiralized vegetables for a while. This is a bit of an impromptu video here, so bear with me. And I just went and picked this one up. The, I, this is not the one I was gonna buy. The one I was gonna buy was $40 on sale for 20. And this one was on clearance for $10. I don't actually know what it retails for. Maybe I'll look that up and put that on the video, but it was on sale for 10. And cheaper isn't always better, but I just really liked how compact it was. I literally haven't even opened it yet. I just got back from the store. So this is kind of an unboxing, if you will. And uh, I liked how small it stores, because I mean, kitchen appliances can really just get out of hand and uh, you know, you just, what's, you lose more and more shelf space and counter space to more and more gadgets and it just gets frustrating, right? So I like this one because it was smaller. We'll see if it holds up. If it doesn't hold up, I will literally take it back tonight um, and just go for the one that I was originally gonna buy here. But we've been wanting to try spiralized vegetables for a while and uh, with the garden just going, going off the way it is, it's finally time. So, um, pull to lock before folding up. What's going on here? Oh, I see. So that actually keeps it locked in place when it's down and then that allows you to fold it right there. So you gotta lock that in place. A little cautionary tape by the blade here. It does have a variety of blades. This is actually why I liked this one because the other one I was going to buy, every single blade had its own like plastic handle and piece to it. And it was just gigantic. It took up so much room, um, which is not what I want. I liked this. I liked that it all kind of fit in place here. So I just pulled that out and I'm assuming that just fits right in there. So, lock. That keeps it from coming off. Unlock. I guess that keeps it, you know, so you can then store it. And we've also got a lock and unlock feature down here. There's also a suction cup on the bottom. Sometimes I find suction cups only work if, uh, one, they're wet, or two, it's a bit more of a stainless steel. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually attach these things to a cookie sheet and then that way the cookie sheet catches all your food anyway so then you're not messing up your counter. Sometimes what drives me nuts about these things is as you're moving them they like tend to <laughs> tend to undo the screw bit but maybe those are just older ones. I think I'm going to try this thing on a cookie sheet and see if we can't get it to be a little bit more stable. Like I said, I've literally never used one of these before. This is the first time, so. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming you just pop it in and presto changeo. Yeah, the suction cup is not staying in place, but that's pretty seamless. I like how quick that goes. And I actually thought it wouldn't be able to handle the bigger zucchini, but it seems to be handling this medium sized one okay. That might change as we move up in size, because obviously some of my zucchini is quite big. Uh, all right, wow, okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. And that's actually quite a lot for that uh, little bit. We only took the end off of this one here. Now, I have heard you can dehydrate this, which is the way I'm going to go. There's quite a lot of mush on the bottom there. Um, and I've heard that you shouldn't freeze zucchini. So I'm actually gonna freeze some and dehydrate some and maybe cook some fresh just to sort of do a bit of a comparison here. Um, but I think what I'd like to do is dehydrate just because that tends to be my favorite way to preserve. So why don't we get the dehydration trays and get some of this set up. I am really impressed with how much I got out of that. Um, 
I'm assuming I'm not gonna want them that long. And when you buy vegetable noodles in the store, they tend to kind of be like in piles. So maybe I'll try and try and do that here. Let's give this guy a try. I'm a little worried about the bigger end going through the spiraler, but um, I don't know. Like I said, I have more zucchini that I know what to deal with. So, uh, I mean, I'd rather just experiment with it. I think my biggest complaint about this thing so far is that it's not staying stationary. If this was stationary, I mean, I don't see any difference between this one and the other ones at the store. Again, this was on clearance, so I don't know what its cost is normally. Um, but I feel like it's performing well. Uh, this will actually dehydrate at the temperature the fireweed is in right now, which is like 110, 115 degrees. Uh, I'm just going to pull out the mushy middle. I feel like I don't want to bother with that. Um, so I think I'm actually just going to slide this in the dehydrator alongside the fireweed and just see how it does. It is a bit tall. Um, you do have to watch that in your dehydrator because there's only so much room, but we'll, we'll just see what happens here. I'm only going to do a little bit frozen because this is more just for testing purposes. When looking it up online, freezing was not recommended and dehydrating was recommended only by one person that I could find. So. Um, maybe we'll even just do one bag. If this does freeze well, I will vacuum seal it. But just for this video's purposes, we'll put it in a Ziploc bag. We'll let that freeze overnight and see how it goes. They say because it has so much water in it, it does not freeze well and then uh, it doesn't adhere to the cooking process very well. So. I, I would tend to believe that, but I, I do want to see for myself. I think I'm going to use this one to cook now because it's been in the fridge a while. You can see it's kind of not looking so good around the edges uh, where these were actually picked like extremely recently. So I'm going to cook this one up and um, we'll give this one a try fresh and see how it all compares. Uh, and I've never actually cooked this before, so I may need to look up how to cook this and then bring it back over once it's ready to go. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I just looked up the best ways to cook zoodles. That's how this, that's how spontaneous this video is. Um, so there's three methods that I like the sound of. One is just a standardized boiling uh, like you would any sort of vegetable and you only cook for like one to two minutes. So we're gonna do a boiling method. The next is a saute method with some olive oil, which I think is probably going to be the best option. And the third method, believe it or not, is gonna be the microwave. Yeah, the microwave. Uh, because zucchinis have so much water in them, um, there's enough water in there really for them to just cook themselves. So it says 30 minute increments for the microwave. And we're just gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna do a little bit of garlic, a little bit of olive oil. The saute will obviously have the olive oil as part of the cooking process. This one will, and these two, will put the olive oil on after the fact. And then, um, Put a little garlic and a little bit of parmesan on it so that they all taste the same because really what we're going here for is texture and uh cooking process okay we're back this one was boiled this one has been sauteed this one has been microwaved right off the cuff this made me nervous i felt like i was immediately overcooking it um so it's kind of stressful to make this was more fun to make sauteing things and you can smell it and the garlic smelled good and the olive oil smelled good. Where this you have to add after it's cooked. Same with this. You have to add the olive oil and parmesan and garlic after it's cooked. But already this looks like the most appetizing. It actually looks like the crisper of all of them. Where this one looks a little bit mushy. And this one looks the most mushy. It's a little transparent there which makes me think I cooked it too long. Uh, but let's give it a try. These are really, really, really long zoodles. Not bad. Not bad. Boiled. Oh, and they were only boiled for like two minutes. It was very stressful. Trying to not cook them. I do like that it has a very spaghetti feel, right? You do get that sort of pasta feel to it. I would maybe in the future trim them a little shorter. 
That's way better. Way better. This tastes a little soggy, even though it doesn't feel overcooked. Where this actually has more of a crisp crispness to it. Microwaved. I am a skeptic. Not bad. I would say this is a perfect blend between these two. There's definitely a wateriness to it, but it doesn't feel soggy. Where this, even though it doesn't taste overcooked, there's a soggy feeling to it. Where this one doesn't have that soggy feeling, um, but it doesn't feel watery. Where this one actually seems a bit watery, however crisp. So going on flavor then, because this was actually cooked in the olive oil, where these ones, the olive oil was added after. That has the best flavor. So if you're going for speed, microwaving is definitely your, cho your choice. So you can actually make zucchini noodles and put them in the fridge in a container and they'll hold for a few days. So if you're looking for like a quick like work lunch that you want to make the night before or a couple days before and throw in a microwave. This is a huge, huge win right here, actually. I might even do that for tomorrow morning. If you're looking for something with a bit more flavor, something that actually makes it feel like you're cooking, you could even add more to this, right? You could cook your chicken and tomatoes and what have you and then throw this at the last second and just warm them up. Uh, but this actually has more of a culinary experience, if you will, because you're actually cooking it and experiencing with it. This is just boiling and you can even see that this is losing some of its color where these still feel a little brighter to me. So um, I would say if I was at home making dinner, I would fry it uh, or saute it with olive oil. If I'm going to work and need a quick lunch, microwaving. There is nothing wrong with microwaving. I would probably avoid boiling completely. Even if you're going to do this with spaghetti, um, I would still saute them and then have the spaghetti sauce in a different pan. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, that is cooking with fresh. Just hang tight and we'll compare the dehydrated and frozen. Different day for me, couple seconds for you. Welcome back, as promised, this is the next day. I've got my dehydrated here. It just blows my mind how much dehydration minimizes the product. Like you can remember or I can't really remember how big that was when we first put it on and how minimal that has now become and then we've got our frozen right here I think I'm gonna just run some water over this to defrost it and what I'm thinking here as far as a recooking process is I'm actually gonna microwave this one because I liked the way that turned out and then I'm gonna like ramen style these, as in I'm gonna boil some water, put these in the bowl, and let them kind of come back to life. Um, I really don't think we're gonna get the same feel and texture that we did yesterday with the fresh. Uh, I just don't see it being possible. Um, I do like this style for dehydration. I think it is actually a nicer way to do it over the slices, but as far as getting the actual zoodle feel, I don't think this one's gonna work out. So let me rinse this one off and start with that. Uh, I'm just going to essentially run some water over it until it's defrosted here, and then we'll get some water boiling for this guy and see where we end up. All right, that literally took like 30 seconds to get that um, defrosted. It looks pretty lifeless. Um, but they were saying that freezing it really just completely eradicates it. And I don't feel like that's necessarily the case. It's already a little bit warm from the water, so it doesn't seem super appetizing. And then the dehydrated, so funny. We're just going to put in there. And then I'm just going to salt it and put a bit of Parmesan on. I know it's just cheap Parmesan, but just to kind of give it that feel from yesterday to see how well we can reenact this here. This one we're going to microwave, so why don't I just go ahead and do that. Okay, that's been microwaved for 30 seconds. You can tell I'm not super impressed with it. Boiling water. Like I said, I'm going to like 
ramen this one, like Mr. Noodles it here, so um, that might need to sit a bit. Obviously, when you rehydrate products from dehydration, it's never going to look like it did fresh. It's always going to have some sort of deflated feeling to it. And that's just what dehydration does. Obviously not as impressive as how it looked yesterday. Doesn't feel as impressive to eat. I'm not as excited about it. Again, this is frozen, microwaved. Not a fan of that texture at all. I am all about texture when it comes to food and that is not enjoyable. Um, it feels like very kind of, not slimy, but kind of like, if you're not a fan of like that sort of cooked mushroom texture. Again, pretty lifeless. Not as excited to eat it. <laughs> not a fan of how it all clumps together like that either. Makes it kind of hard to eat. Overall, not a big fan of how this is turning out. This would also be a case for cutting those noodles shorter before you do anything with them. This at least still has some crunch to it. I don't even know if you could hear that. I know hearing someone eat can be kind of gross, but this actually still at least has some texture to it. Like it's edible. I, I couldn't even do another bite of that. That to me is disgusting. Um, but at least this one has a little bit of bite left in it. Uh, like it, it to me is, is usable as a food. This is doable. I think my biggest complaint is just how it sticks together. Um, I don't really know how you get around that. I guess maybe just doing what I'm doing now with playing with it. Also, I wouldn't dehydrate it in those crazy long strands. I'd probably cut it shorter, maybe three inch strands. Um, so that when you're eating it, it's actually a bit more like bite sized. And as you can see, it's like, not separating very easily after the fact. So you would want to cut that while it's still fresh before you dehydrate it so that it's a little more palatable after the fact. Not as excited about it, but from a preservation standpoint, I like this. You could actually bake with that still if you wanted to do zucchini loaf. This would be completely usable. I would probably just, you know, chop it up super fine or, or what have you, or if you dehydrated it, grate it, or or something like that. So this is still, to me, a usable product, uh, whether it be fresh or or what have you. Like, like I'm not opposed, to, I'm actually like, I consider taking another bite of this. This, no thank you, no, no, no. I'm happy I only did the one test of it. Um, where this one's all good. So there you go, guys. Um, zucchini, ways to preserve it. I still have like this big bad boy, so. <laughs> I think for the most part, I would like to try and eat these zoodled fresh. Um, like I said, they do make a really great lunch, uh, just microwaving it. I was pretty happy with that, uh, just in general. So as far as preservation is concerned, I think dehydration is the way to go uh, for long-term preservation or anyway. but. In general, I think for zucchinis, I would say the zucchini relish. I made a zucchini marmalade um, and then dehydrating for baking purposes or uh, you could reheat it with just some hot water, which again, makes a great work lunch if all you have access to is a kettle. Cause you could have like chicken and veggies in there and then just, you know, dump some hot water in and heat it all up, right? Like this does work. It does work. It's not great, but it works. So there you go, from fresh to preserved to recooked. That is zucchini for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment to let you know, let me know if you've tried one of these methods before or if you're gonna try it. I'd love to know how it turns out for you or how you work with it. Uh, we are a new channel, so liking, subscribing, sharing means the world to us. Um, we're really doing this channel mainly for our own documentation purposes and you know to document our own journey and to share knowledge with those who who are into similar lifestyles so hope you enjoyed the channel we'll catch you on the next one and this is a keeper this is definitely the bigger keeper but this is not bad all right guys we'll see you on the next video